But on the other hand, those of you who are looking to place a pre-order on the new iPad, just do it. No, really, just do it. Okay, so I have an iPad mini 6 with me right now, and this is going to be such an easy video to explain why this device should be in your watch list. But as usual, I wanna talk about the drawbacks of this device first, then we can move on to talk about the good stuff. So the first thing that I kinda of dislike is the placement of the volume rockers and the power button. And the reason for that is because one of the things that I normally do on this device is gaming, which requires me to hold it in landscape mode. Now, what I notice, annoyingly enough, is when I hold the device in uh, landscape mode, I always unintentionally lock the device. Like it happens a couple of times in that, you know, one gaming period. So I have to keep reminding myself, do not put too much pressure on the side constantly until it is glued to my own muscle memory. And it is actually worse if I rotate the device, like having my lower palm area rest on the power button. It's, um, I, I don't know, I, I, just, I just find it annoying, but I get why Apple decided to place where they are, and it's because they need enough area and length to place the magnetic pen placeholder. So yeah, as much as it bugs me, but, I, but again, I understand why they're doing it as so, and I understand it gets better with time. And in relation to that, the good thing that Apple did with this iPad mini is the volume rockers, you know, the up and down button are not fixed and will change based on the orientation you are holding it in. So that entirely eliminates the confusion. And the next downside that I've noticed is, now this might sound like I'm nitpicking, but but you know, you know what, maybe I am and you'll find out why. So anyway, it's about the fingerprint sensor. So if you aren't familiar yet, this thing has its fingerprint sensor built in into the sleep wake button itself. But unlike any other devices with similar mechanism that I have previously, this device won't show the home screen right away when you place your registered fingerprint on the button. However, you'll have to press the power button first, hold it for like half a second, but it's not the fastest fingerprint, unfortunately, and there's no fast ID as well to help you know, the whole situation. So you are left with the fingerprint or the conventional pin to unlock your device. So it, but it does have center stage features, so at least you're not missing out on that one. So you wanna use it for like family virtual tahlilka or any kind of virtual gathering. They work great. Now this device suits me very well and our sentiment might not be mutual in this case. And I get it because you might want an iPad for creative purposes like digital drawings, for example, in which this device does support the Apple Pencil, but it is slightly noticeably slower than my previous iPad Pro, but I do know some people wouldn't really mind it. And this iPad mini does not have Apple's famous ProMotion display. It doesn't have that fast 120 hertz speed. And the most noticeable appearance is the thick bezels on the sides, which kind of makes the display look smaller in person. And it's not meant to. Like this device is not meant to have those top of the line features because I think Apple doesn't really target this iPad mini for the creative niche, you know? And I follow that because if you're someone whose daily tasks revolve around creativity, you might want to opt for its bigger siblings. But if you need a small, fun size, lightweight device that you can easily pull out and draw your ideas or do, you know, some not taking on the go without having to worry about the size. Or if you are a Kindle user, but need something more than just a, well, a Kindle. Man, this is one for you. This is, this is made for you, right? So, <clears throat> the good stuff. Boy, where do I begin? Um, I don't really want to talk about the user experience because it has the same exact iPad OS um, like the other iPads, which for me personally, I have no big issues with it. But due to its size, it kind of allows the iPad OS to be more enjoyable to a point. I thought to myself, like for the bigger iPad, right, they've got to have their own customized OS to let it be on par with its sizing standard. It's very tough to explain how perfectly compact and comfortable the size is. But if you have a chance, you have to feel it for yourself and to understand that, you know, just hold it. It feels like this, your hand can comfortably hug the device. That's all I can say. But then again, maybe it's only perfect 
to me because I usually use my iPad for only two things, like reading my eBooks and doing some casual gaming like DLS 22 and Pokemon Unite, which I usually do before I go to bed. And I totally, totally enjoy it. And on top of that, I wouldn't really have to worry about its weight since it is very light and ergonomic itself allows you to hold the device just as perfect and proportionate, especially if you want to play games on this. The reachability of buttons are for me very good and comfortable. And it kind of reminds me of the old days where tablet of you know similar sizes were taking over the tech industry. But if it isn't obvious enough, of course, this is like the better reiteration of that age. Um, other than that, before I wrap things up, the battery performance of this device is between eight to 10 hours, depending on your personal usage. And thankfully, Apple does include the 20 watt USB charger inside the box. Uh, but then this thing supports up to 25 watts. So when you think about it, that's a win since it's Apple we're talking about here. <laughs> the screen, um, I would say it's fine. Like it's 60 Hertz might be a letdown for some people, but as an average user myself, it is okay. But the brightness level looks pretty dim inside this footage though. Um, I've cranked the brightness to the highest, but in, in person, it does look much brighter, but still for me, it isn't quite enough. And this iPad mini doesn't ship with Apple's M series chip but rather only using the A15, but, but again, it doesn't have to have the latest M series chip or even the M1 chip because this thing is built to be on the go. And last but not least, this might be relevant to the review, but I have unboxed quite a number of devices since I started this channel. And this thing, when I first held it with my own hands, the excitement was definitely there. Like at first glance, I know this iPad mini was, was going to tailor to my own needs. It's great, it's a great device. And I think you should get one. Or at least if you're still contemplating to buy one, you know, just go to the shop or any shop that you can find with an iPad mini 6 on display and just hold it with your own hands. That I would suggest, right? Okay. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content of this video and subscribe if you enjoy the content of my channel as usual. See you guys next one.